Hello, it's me. I'm back after god knows how many years. If you're watching this recording, I'm probably dead. Or at least that's how it appears to my subscribers. The thing is, it doesn't even feel like it's been that long since I posted Cobra Kai Custom Lego Minifigure Series 21. It's just been such a crazy year that time doesn't even seem real anymore. But that's getting way too personal, so let's talk about little plastic guys instead. Even if I don't really feel like being a YouTuber anymore, I did make a pledge to upload at least one LEGO minifigure series every year, and I'm going to stick to that as a little annual tradition, regardless of how many views I end up getting. As for the theme of the series, it's most likely going to end up being whatever TV show I'm into at the time of uploading, because they basically take over my media interests. So the TV show of 2023 is... dot dot dot... Breaking Bad! The hidden gem, the underrated little show that could. Definitely not the most basic and boring choice for the best TV show of all time. But I can say with full certainty that, after watching it for the very first time this year, it's probably my favourite thing ever. Like, ever ever. I can say that and feel like it's true since I record every TV show and movie I watch. And this is legitimately number one of it all, top of the list baby. So, what if LEGO made a minifigure series based on the show? Okay, let's face it, this is completely unrealistic based on the show's subject matter, so it doesn't even qualify for a what-if scenario. Instead, it's a, I really like this show and I wanted to draw it scenario. Also, it's more popular than ever based on the memes I see everywhere. So, without further ado, let's get cooking. First in the series is, of course, one of the most famous residents of 308 Negro Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87104, in history, Walter Hartwell White himself. I actually designed a Walt minifigure ages ago, before I even watched the show, so I figured that, for old time's sake, I'd keep him looking pretty much the same, down to the pose and the accessory. That accessory is just a generic green test tube with bubbles printed on the side for science. His outfit is typical Walter White fashion, but if you want to be specific, it comes from Season 5, Episode 7, Say My Name, from the scene where he confronts Mike Ehrmantraut. Also, he comes with his iconic Heisenberg hat, obviously, which is a new piece because existing fedoras didn't really work. Only after drawing his alternate expression, which is the meme-worthy expression from frame whatever of Ozymandias, did I realise that bald minifigures aren't supposed to have alternate expressions. However, I feel like in this situation, I can be forgiven. Walt may be the face of the show, and the only one to be in an epic rap battle of history, but Jesse Pinkman has become one of my favourite characters of all time. I haven't rooted for a fictional character more while watching a TV show, which is weird when you take a step back and realise you're rooting for a meth cook, but who cares, he deserves the world anyway. Jesse's figure is wearing the yellow lab outfit that Gus gave to him and Walt, because I feel like at least one of them should be wearing it. You could easily get two Jessies and replace one of their heads with Walt's to get the duo rocking the yellow together, if this was a real series. Plus it helps that the new mask headgear piece doesn't have any hair at the back, because both are bald boys. That being said, Jesse does come with an alternate hair piece to capture his appearance in early seasons of the show, and an alternate face to show how he is a freaking crybaby. Finally, his accessory is a translucent blue tile, which represents something nice and family friendly that LEGO would definitely include. Mm -hmm, yep. Next is Skylar White, yo. She comes with an outfit that's white, yo. Uh-huh. That's pretty much everything. Well, apart from that, she has what I believe is a new colour for this hairpiece, and no alternate expression, so she can have this perpetual scowl. Skylar has two accessories. One is a missing poster from Season 2, which is the only appearance of pre-goatee Walt in this series. The other is a whole new character, Holly White, using the existing baby piece with some new printing. I figured that Holly would work best as an accessory to Skylar, even though Skylar's outfit is from a Season 1 scene meaning the baby shouldn't even be born at this point in the timeline. However, it does make sense if you make sure you don't skip the time-travelling baby arc from Season 5. When I first started the show, I think ASAC Hank Schrader was actually my favourite character. He's just such a perfect blend of comic relief, stereotypical uncle, and actual hero of the lore. Right now I think Jesse's definitely my favourite, but I cannot discount the funny, sussy, backup cameo guy. His minifigure has a particularly bald head, even amongst all the other bald characters, 
His outfit represents him pretty well since it has an orange shirt that he always seems to wear, as well as a DEA badge on top of that. I almost gave him a DEA badge and an accessory, but I couldn't once it was part of his torso. So in addition to a boring black gun, I gave him a different one by one tile, this being the Heisenberg drawing, which Hank was pretty stupid in not realising it was a drawing of his own brother-in-law, and I Lego fried the drawing accordingly. Obviously with Hank comes his lovely wife Marie. Actually not obviously, because I actually thought about cutting her from this series to make room for more characters from the drug side of the show. But that's stupid, because Marie is part of the main cast in all five seasons. Also she's kind of hilarious herself. She has a typical Marie purple outfit, which is a whole thing that Vince could probably explain to you instead. She has a new colour for the Black Widow hairpiece, and her accessory is something I almost gave to Hank. But I had other ideas for his items, and no other ideas for her items. These are two accessories representing the iconic, uh, rocks scene. Also, she has this sort of no expression that I forgot to mention. Whoopsie doodles, it comes from the episode where she finds out that Hank is dead. Sorry, spoilers. To finish off the first half of this series, and also the Walt's family side of the TV show, here's Walt Jr., aka Flynn, aka the second most famous person named Walter White. He's a unique minifigure because of his crutches, which, as a concept, have appeared in Lego before, but I wanted them to be accurate to the ones Junior uses. They're very simple builds, though, just using two tap slash hose pieces and two telescope pieces, both in light grey. I could build them in real life to make sure they can pose a figure like this accurately, but nothing else looked like it worked on Mecha Bricks, so I just went with this. The rest of Junior's minifigure is pretty basic, just using Harry Potter's hair, and the crutches are enough of an accessory, but if you wanted, you could make your own plate of breakfast. Alright, now let's get to the three characters I'm sure you were waiting for. Starting with who is technically the main villain of the show, unless you count Walter White himself. Gustavo Fring, played by the guy who most people just call Gustavo Fring. You may know him from his such roles as Cold Calculating Main Villain from this TV show, Cold Calculating Main Villain from this TV show, or Bugging Out from Do the Right Thing 1989. His minifigure comes with his iconic yellow shirt and tie, and a relatively new skin tone used on characters like Ironheart and Electro. I almost gave him this short hair used on characters like Electro, but I saved that one for a later figure. His accessory is a Los Pollos Hermanos chicken bucket, which I legified, and he comes with an alternate expression, which is a huge spoiler if you somehow weren't already aware of it. If you have a complaint about me spoiling the show, I suggest you submit through my comment section. I would be more than happy to assist you. Okay, here goes. Three, two, one. Holy crap, Lois. It's Two-Face from Batman. Has anyone watching heard of the AMC TV series Better Call Saul, which ran from 2015 to 2022? I haven't seen it, but apparently from what I've heard, it's about a random guy called Jimmy, who goes on wacky misadventures with his friends Kim and Howard. On an unrelated note, here's Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad. I didn't realise just how much of a comic relief Saul would be going into the show for the first time, but yeah, he really is a dirtbag comedy lawyer with a painted brand of crass legalese. And we love him for it. In Lego form, he has a new hairpiece to capture his unique comb-over, because I felt nothing else really suited him. His outfit is suitably colourful, while not being ridiculous, and for a little easter egg, I hid one of those blue ribbons on his suit in memoriam of Flight 515. He also comes with a standard dark brown suitcase for some hardcore lawyering, and because the piece allows for a 1x2 tile to be hidden inside it, I decided to include the Hello Kitty phone he gives to Jesse. Licensing fees be damned, that would be a funny piece to include in a Lego set. Oh yeah, and he also has an alternate expression with a Bluetooth earphone. Walter. Don't you break away, Walter. I'm not building sets with you right now, Walter. The last of the holy trinity of supporting characters outside of Jesse and the family is Mike Herman Trout, who honestly might be up there as one of my favourites. He didn't start out that way, but now I love his voice and mannerisms so much. I can't wait to watch him as the second build character in the other show. Unfortunately, he does have a pretty boring appearance, and also Jonathan Banks has a face that's difficult to capture with a Lego head, so his minifigure isn't one of my favourites. His only splash of colour comes with his accessory, which is a build for an acid bucket. That's not something directly linked to Mike, besides the start of Season 5 Episode 8 when he goes to Belize, but it's just another iconic prop I wanted to include somewhere in here. Oh, and he also has a gun, so he can shoot people who are not capable of being the guy. Okay, now we're through with all the essential inclusions in a Breaking Bad series, I can move on to the more wildcard picks. While the first nine are all 100% guaranteed picks, except maybe Marie, the next three spots are up for debate. 
You might be confused then as to why Jane Margolis is the next figure included. Really, I just wanted a bit of gender diversity because there's only two really prominent female characters in the whole show. I guess I could have included Lydia, but let's face it, Jane is a more interesting character design to draw than just a middle-aged woman in a suit. So yeah, here's Jessie's goth GF from season two, who he ends up living happily ever after with. It's worth mentioning here that Forstud, the Lego artist formerly known as CM Forsy, also made a Breaking Bad series and decided to include Jane with the same two accessories that I've chosen. I'll be honest and say his ideas inspired mine, and I don't know what other two items could have represented Jane. One of her beloved syringes, and the iconic pink teddy bear that is linked to her in a slightly morbid domino effect way. Plus it just fits her goth vibe to have a teddy bear like that, you know? Imagine a universe where Tuco Salamanca was the main villain of Breaking Bad. I mean, he basically was from seasons 1-2, to two, but by the end you forget he ever existed. However, his initial importance was enough of a factor for me to include him in the LEGO series. Like Mike Ehrmantraut, his appearance was not easily translatable into LEGO form, and I debated whether to even give him hair or not. In the end, I decided to give him that shaved head look that I almost gave Gus, like I mentioned, but in dark brown for the first time. He comes with an intricately patterned white shirt, which I consider his most iconic look, and his accessory is a shotgun, which he wielded in his final boss fight. Or if you want, his accessory is a separate red hand, successfully bloodied after a disagreement with one of his buddies. To go with this, his alternate expression is one that evokes the sound Will Smith puts in the background of his songs. And finally is Tuco's beloved T.O. Hector Salamanca, whose actor Mark Margolis did in fact pass away after I drew his figure, but before I uploaded this video. Rest in peace, Lord of the Ding Ding Dings. Even if Jane and Tuco weren't 100% likely, and could potentially have been substituted for Tord and Lydia, I feel like Hector is such an iconic character that he may actually have been essential. A silent, wheelchair-bound cartel leader with a permanent frowny face just screams Lego minifigure. Unlike his nephew, he uses the newish skin tone used on the Mandalorian and Cassian Andor, and that means his bald cap piece would be new in that colour. His wheelchair is the common build used for wheelchairs and sets, as he can't be the real thing, but his belt can count as his accessory. That's just the stamp piece in gold, but it works surprisingly well without me having to make a new piece. He might be one of my new favourite figures that I've drawn, just based on his expression alone. Wait. What was that sound? Huh? Oh! I'm alive. Huh. Okay, so there we go. My one and only LEGO series for 2023 is in the books. See you next year. Peace out. Okay, I'll talk for a tiny bit longer. Uh, the packaging! That just uses the green, smoky, Breaking Bad background, obviously. And that's about it. If LEGO went absolutely insane one day and decided to make a 12 minifigure series based on this graphic, mature television drama from 15 years ago, here's what it would look like. Bravo, Vince. As for what the future holds for this channel, uh, not much, I'm afraid. It's not really much of a passion for me anymore, and video making was never my dream job, so I don't really want to prioritise that over other things I do. You can still follow my Instagram, at uh, authorbiologist, to see when I next do LEGO related art, but like I said, don't expect a daily stream of content. If you do go over there, you'll find out that I procrastinated turning this series into a YouTube video since July, because my work ethic is top notch. So I'll see you when I see you, probably taking you by surprise. Happy Spooktober! Bye! 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 Bitch!